Right, I tell you how they champs. Now, I do apologise for my voice because I do indeed have a bit of a frog in my throat. Now, I sound like I smoke five packs of ciggies instead of two. Anyway, let's see how this Dell G5 15 inch gaming laptop games. And Eric, my man, thank you for being my first Patreon supporter. And if you do like my content and you'd like to support the channel, my Patreon link is in the description. Thank you again. Now, this Dell G5 15 inch gaming laptop, it looks the part. Now, proper gaming laptop laptops. They are supposed to give you a hernia when you pick them up. Proper gaming laptops, you're supposed to get burnt when you touch them. And proper gaming laptops, you're supposed to be deafened. That's what a proper gaming laptop is. Now, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look on it, this is none of those things. It's actually quite thin for a full-on gaming laptop. It's not that loud and it doesn't get that hot. Actually looks pretty good too. Red, have a look, colour, it's not black, fantastic. Actually, the G3, which is the lower end model of this G gaming line, they actually have a white version. Oh my God, I just wish they had white option with all the G series gaming laptops. I think this configuration I have here is just over a thousand dollars US. They start at a much lower price. And in Australia, this is of just shy of 2K, I think. But what you get in here is some serious hardware. Of course, at this price point, you will have some compromises compared to the full on expensive gaming laptops. It has a 60 Hertz display. It's a matte display, IPS panel. At this price point, it's what you would expect. You know, it's not 120 hertz, the viewing angles aren't the best and the colours are a bit subdued, but it's more than acceptable at this price point and it's actually very good for gaming for a 60 hertz monitor. Didn't notice any real blurring or ghosting, so it's actually good for gaming. I do love the red colour, it looks good. Being a gaming laptop and this big, of course, you have a two and a half inch drive bay, you have M.2 as well. So that means you can have your M.2 as your boot drive and you can have a two and a half inch hard drive to store all your games. Of course, the hard drive is a little bit slow. It's a 5,400 RPM hard drive. So in the future, I would suggest upgrading that to a two and a half inch SSD and this thing will sing. There's no backlight on the keyboard, which I found a bit strange, but um, that is what it is. Talking about the keyboard, it's fine for gaming. Of course, you're gonna use a mouse as well. Had no issues gaming with it. It has all the ports you need, it has ethernet, USB type A, and even Thunderbolt 3s. So it is future-proof in that way. Thermals, no issues here, no throttling. You get maximum performance, and this model here has a GTX 1060, six gigabyte graphics card. It has Intel's latest eighth generation six core i7-8750. And I'll be actually very interested to see how fast this renders in Premiere Pro. And this one has 16 gigs RAM as well. So you obviously you can get it with a GTX 1050 Ti and, and at a lower price point. So anyway, let's find out how well it games. We'll just run through some benchmarks here. Now with the G7, which is the next model up, you're able to get 120 Hertz display. You can even get an i9 as well. Now see, Seeing this is a 60 hertz display and it has a GTX 1060, I just cranked the settings to max. At 1080p, of course, this is a 1080p display. So there was no point lowering the settings. So this is all max ultra settings for all these games. So with PUBG 1080p ultra, we have 111 frames per second. Fortnite, 109 frames per second. And by the way, I'll leave the gamer tag of the biggest Fortnite fan in the world. Make sure you hook up with him, tell him I sent you, and his Discord as well. Battlefield 1, virtually 80 frames per second. DSX Mankind divided the system crusher, 69 frames per second. That is really good. CSGO, over 200 frames, forget about it, just crushes that, no problem. And even GTA 5, ultra settings, 1080p, 97 frames per second. So this laptop absolutely smashes these benchmarks. At max settings, you really do get the maximum performance out of this. And, and considering the benchmarks are so good, it's actually worth considering going to the G7 and actually getting a high refresh rate monitor because these frames per second, I mean, the lowest at max settings was DSX Mankind divided at 70 and all the other games were 80 frames plus. So if you reduce those settings to high or even medium, you'll be getting over 100 frames per second to really take use of a high refresh rate monitor. So now we'll get onto the live gameplay playing GTA 5. You can watch the telemetry in the top left hand corner for temperatures and frames per second. I'd really like to thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, you know what to do. All right, tell you how they're chaps. Now let's see how this game's GTA 5. Top left hand corner you have the telemetry. 
This of course has a GTX 1060. So it's a six gigabyte graphics card. Intel's eighth generation <coughs> 8750H processor. All right, let's go. This is at ultra, 1080p ultra settings, as high as we can go at 1080p. You can probably hear the fans, I'll let you listen. Not too bad, I don't think it's um, working too hard to cool itself down now. Now this is a good test GTA 5 because GTA 5 does have quite a high um, CPU usage. So it gets pretty much as hot as it can get. And as you can see here, at 1080p ultra settings, and this um, laptop here plays any game, like ultra settings over 60 frames and, and in excess, like 70, 80, 90 frames per second. It's not that much slower than a GTX 1070 Max-Q, to be honest. Um, amazing. Uh, performance you're getting it's not that loud for a gaming laptop oh i know where that corner is every time and it gets me look we're getting nearly 100 frames per second actually we are getting 100 frames per second at ultra settings the highest settings you can get on this um that is amazing what 86 degrees cpu and that's pretty much as it can go up to 90s in the cpu department but gta 5 does push it the hardest in terms of CPU, how hot the CPU will go. So most games it won't get as hot as it does with this GTA 5. It does have a 60 hertz display. I mean, at this price point, it's a <laughs> an acceptable um, display. Obviously, you can get the G7, I think, and you can get a 120 hertz display, but you know that's going to be much more expensive as well. So it's matte display. It is nice. So it is enjoyable to play. I don't notice any ghosts. It's actually all right. The viewing angles aren't the best and maybe the color doesn't pop. And it's not the brightest display, but at this price point, it is um, certainly okay. As you can see, pushing in excess of 100 frames. No issue whatsoever. And as far as gaming laptops, it's not that loud. <clears throat> 68 degrees on the GPU there. And what do we get on the CPU? Run at 3.7 now. So no throttling on this. I'm happy to um, I'm happy to say no throttling when gaming. Eighth generation power here. So these things really sing these um, these CPUs. I mean, compared to the 7th generation for gaming, it's not that much of a big deal. But um, certainly when it comes to content creation, those extra two cores you get with the 8th generation is really much appreciated and really cuts down render times. For gaming, there's not a big difference, but this thing here, it games like a friggin' champ. Look at it. And, <clears throat> and these come in at a fairly low price point. I mean, there is the G3, which is even cheaper, and that will have a 1050 Ti. Actually, probably more an appropriate graphics card for a 60 hertz display is the 1050 Ti, because this one here is pushing at ultra, at max. Like, I set every game to its max settings, um, and still it was pushing well in excess of 60 frames per second. So it's actually sort of a bit of a waste to have a GTX 1060 because you're not getting any advantage, anything over 60 frames per second because we have a 60 hertz display. As I said, the G7, you can get um, 120 hertz display. Also, if you are outputting to an external monitor, yes, then it can make a difference. So if you get a high refresh rate monitor, in the future and you want to connect this laptop up to it then certainly the gtx 1060 makes you know sense because you're going to get you more use out of that 100 whatever 120 144 hertz display if you get one of those 
Oh crap, bit of carnage here. As you can see, the frames are very consistent. You know, just touches into the 90 CPU, but that's about as bad as it gets. And for a gaming laptop, <clears throat> not that loud. So at this price point, it's a great weapon, actually. Um, it might be an idea to get one of these, you know, instead of buying a more expensive gaming laptop, get one of these in a high refresh rate monitor. How good would that be? Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to wrap this up. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for my new patron who pledged. Oh, thank you very much. That's very generous. Um, if you do like my content and you would like to support the channel, um, yeah, you can add on to my Patreon page. And thanks for watching, guys. Give me a thumbs up, thanks, if you like this video. And until next time, guys, tally ho.